Two Rivers Talks is brought to you by Two Rivers Biz Starts. Also by Two Rivers Main Street. And by Raleigh Point Economic Advising. And by viewers like you. Thank you. I'm all about having a good Chinese takeout dish from time to time, but when you live as far out in the country as I do, by the time you get it home, well, it's gotten a little soggy, and they won't deliver out this far. So I've come up with this recipe for a wonderful fried rice. It's very simple, it's super crunchy, and it's got so much flavor, you won't have to add anything else to it. Let me show you how it's done. Hello everybody and welcome to another Two Rivers Talks with Darla and Todd. I am the Todd half of that equation and this is my friend Darla over here. <laughs> and uh, if you're from Two Rivers or you used to be from Two Rivers or you want to be from Two Rivers, and of course let's face it, who wouldn't want to be, um, you will find all the news, uh, fun, music, arts, and more right here on this show. We like to focus on the stories of our town. And uh, in this episode, we have a very special guest lined up, a newcomer uh, to City of Two Rivers, is my understanding. Is that right, Darla? Yes. Yeah. Uh, we'll have yeah. to ask her how long she's been here, but I know it hasn't been long. Right. Uh, so a uh, new resident, Christy Hartman, uh, who is the host of the Gourmet Country Girl blog. And uh, she's going to be sharing with us some delicious recipes, helpful hints, and offering some gentle encouragement uh, through her blog entries, videos, and printable recipes uh, about uh, you know how to eat yummy food and how to make it and all that good stuff. So I'm um, really excited to have her here today. Um, plus, we're going to be doing another How's It Hanging segment uh, with Darla. And uh, we'll let you know uh, what well, she's going to let you know. I'm not going to let you know because I know nothing about art. Uh, but Darla is going to let you know uh, what new art can be viewed and purchased at the gallery. And today you're going to be focusing on what, uh, what we made art. Uh, that's an exhibit that's currently offered uh, at both Basilish Kibibbles, your gallery, and the Rar West Museum in Manitowoc. Right. And uh, what it is, is for this exhibit, it's all the art um, was, was created on March the 15th of this year or later. So right in the middle of COVID and all the social upheaval and everything that all of us were going through, which totally skewed our emotions and our brains, um, can really be seen as reflected in a lot of these pieces of art. Because I know a lot of the artists, I know what they typically would do. And I, I don't understand everybody's mindset, but I, I can recognize who's done what. And with these pieces of art um, just because of all the emotion and all the turmoil and how it affected the artist, it's reflected in the art. And it's a pretty, I, I think it's a very important um, exhibit and especially dealing with the, the issues. So um, that's what's going on. And that is going to be at, at Basil's, Oh, towards the, towards the middle of, October is when we when stuff is going to come down but I'm thinking of extending the dates because there's been so much interest sure well you've already got, you've, you've always got such beautiful artwork in the gallery there and, and and new stuff coming in all the time so it's great that we get to see highlights of um, artists from our area and, and all the cool stuff that they do right right so um so yeah and you know you know what time it is Todd uh, you know, I think according to my watch, it's, um, word of the daytime. It is. <laughs> so if you would care to take it away with word of the day. Yeah. You know, this one's curious cause I've heard, I've heard a, um, a, a take on this word, but not this particular word. You, so I think you, you've got me on another one. This, this is the new one today. Um, the word of the day is caconate. <laughs> Cacinate, C A C C H I N A T E. Now, cacinate. Now, I've heard of concatenate, but that's that's different spelling and that's a different meaning uh, than this is. Cacinate is to 
laugh loudly or immoderately. Um, I wonder if it's related to cackling. Could be. Maybe. Could be. Uh, so used in a sentence, it would be, she does not laugh so much as cackinate, finding at least one thing hysterical in every episode. Philippa Snow, like proper sexual on Too Hot to Handle, Los Angeles Review of Books, August 7th, 2020. What in the world? Where did you get that quote, Darla? I picked that out just especially to embarrass you. <laughs> Wait, so this was from like proper sexual on Too Hot to Handle. I don't even think I could say those words on our show. This is a family-friendly show. <laughs> I'm not beeping you. <laughs> I'm going oh, to have yeah. you say in that sentence a couple of times in all your glory. So. <laughs> oh, very good. Well, cacinate so, is the word from the day. You have made me cacinate with glee uh, over that word of the day. <laughs> I love that word. So thank you for being such a good sport. Uh, always, always. <laughs> so no, shall we uh, shall we go ahead and, and invite uh, Christy on into the, the studio here? I think so. All right, let's go ahead and give her a warm welcome. Hello, Christy. Hi, Christy. <laughs> Hi, how well, are you? Welcome. Thanks for uh, thanks for putting up with our shenanigans. We appreciate it. <laughs> it makes me cacinate. <laughs> ah, very good. Very good. <laughs> So, uh, so, so Christy, I, I guess you're a relative newcomer to the city of Two Rivers. Is that right? Yeah, we moved here in October of last year, so about 11 months already. It's been 11 months, yeah. Wow, so you've gotten to know the area a little bit then in the time that you've lived here. Yeah, yeah, I'm loving it, loving it. I'm still learning, but I'm loving every minute of it. And now, where where did uh, where did you and your, your significant other come, uh, come from originally? We are both from the Fox Valley. Um, originally, he's actually from further south, but we lived there and then we were in Fond du Lac for a while and now we're here. We were only, we were, we've been married for about five years and this is our third move. So hopefully this is it. Oh, uh, well, we, we hope we get to keep you here for sure. Uh, because you make all kinds of amazing, delicious foods. Um, we, we want to hear all about your blog <laughs> and, and what you do. <laughs> okay. Um, well, I... I started the Gourmet Country Girl because I love to cook. I've always loved to cook ever since as far back as I can remember. And I spent 20 years of my life in New York where I learned a lot of what I know from working in different kitchens and different restaurants and met a few celebrities. So that was kind of kind of cool. Mm. But um, I love to cook and I just want to be able to share my recipes with people. And now with everything that's going on with a lot of people can't get out or they have to stay home. I want people to know that cooking is easy. Gourmet cooking isn't, doesn't have to be intimidating. And I just want to share my recipes with people so they can make these really awesome meals in their own house. And it doesn't have to cost a lot of money or take a lot of time. Well, that's really marvelous, especially uh, right now with uh, all the coronavirus stuff. So many of us are choosing to make our own food much more often. So looking for creative ideas about things to fix. Uh, it's a really timely uh, period for you to be sharing your recipes with the world. This sounds interesting. French style omelet Alfredo. You do a savory <laughs> cold strawberry soup. Oh, the perfect poached eggs. Got it. I have to learn how to do that because my poached eggs are... <laughs> I'm not even going to tell you what they look like, but it's horrible. <laughs> Sangria with apple brandy. So, oh, Todd, you were good. thirsty before. That'll make you even thirstier. Now I'm really parched. Yeah. <laughs> um, and I, one of the videos that I watched, uh, you were making crunchy fried rice, and that looked really good. And all these other things, uh, sweet Cajun black and steak, um, instant pot hamburger stew. It's a lot of comfort food. And with the weather getting cool, yeah. I can see making quite a bit of these. And then the one that really is kind of like turning me on here, double chocolate chipotle fudge. The savory strawberry soup is something a chef out in New York taught me. It was okay. a creation. I worked at a golf 
Robin. It was a creation he came up with, and he has onion and pepper in there. And I thought oh, that doesn't really sound like that works. It was amazing. So I kind of put my own spin on it, and that's the recipe. Okay, because that sounds it sounds good. I've had some. Well, actually, well, I eat a lot, so I've had a lot of different dishes <laughs> that you wouldn't at first you wouldn't think that they would be all that great, and they turn out to be the most amazing dishes that you could possibly ever have the opportunity to try. And so I think that's, that's, uh, that's the first lesson of cooking is don't be afraid and yeah. to try, try whatever your little heart desires. And you know what, if it doesn't end up being any good, it's not the end of the world. Yeah. You can't diss it until you try it. That's what I always say. Can't diss it till you dish it. <laughs> Yeah. Damn, I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. So, so Christine, you're, you're, you're drawing on, uh, you know, many years of, of culinary experience in, in New York and you're kind of giving things, you know, sort of your own take or your own spin. I guess I'm wondering, like, uh, you said, for example, with the strawberry soup, uh, that you kind of ended up putting your own take on it. Um, how much trial and error is involved with that for you? Or does it, is it just sort of like become an automatic thing? You're like, Oh, I know exactly what I'm going to add to this. I'm getting better over time. When I first tried creating recipes, it was a lot of trial and error, but now that I'm starting to learn what works and what doesn't, um, some recipes, I get it right on the first try. Others, it takes a few times before I get it to where I want it. Um, I tend to like things on the spicy side, my husband, not so much. So I have to find a happy medium, which I think is great because then it'll work for everybody. But yeah, it's, um, I just created a recipe not too long ago that worked on the first try, a uh, prosciutto, uh, I put prosciutto and mozzarella cheese on a white pizza with pineapple. It's like my own take on a Hawaiian pizza and it just, and awesome sauces on it, so <laughs> which okay. is one of my recipes too. It's a little bit sweeter. It's a tomato sauce, but it's a little bit sweeter than regular tomato sauce, but it's got a little kick to it. So it really works with the prosciutto, which is a bit saltier, a bit sharper than regular ham. And that was a that worked on the first try, but that doesn't always happen. Yeah. Oh, I love I love prosciutto. Any anything with a bacony spin to it, you know, that you can't go wrong with that. Right. <laughs> Now, Todd, I, I, this is something I don't know about you, so you'll have to fill me in. Do you like to cook, or is Noelle the person who prepares most of your meals? Noelle is the culinary genius in the family. Um, I am a competent sous chef uh, at best, so I, you know, I can follow a recipe. I'm not very adventurous. Uh, I can make a mean breakfast, so I mean, I could maybe be a uh, you know, a line cook or something like that, but that's about as good as I'm going to be. <laughs> All right. Cause I, I love to cook and, um, well, it was like, I was telling, telling you Todd yesterday, I think is that, um, you know, I've been cooking for over 40 years and, but everything that I know, I learned from PBS. Oh yeah. Yeah. You know, <laughs> Well, my, so my mother never taught me how to make a thing, which is good because, ew. So, you know, and maybe that's what spurred me on was to. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to, I'm going to listen to the people who actually know what they're talking about. I mean, you're, you're absolutely right. <laughs> you know, Noelle and I always follow, you know, we're like, we like, uh, we like Chuck the Pan, we like um, Julia Child. We watched a lot of their, you know, their shows. Um, Man, it just so many, uh, you know, all, uh, Jamie Oliver, you know, some of his stuff, um, you know, I don't know, uh, Christy, are you, are you an addict of the Food Network or, or do you find that that yeah. is too distracting? I, um, <laughs> I have my DVR set. I have the shows. And my favorite, one of my favorites is Reed Drummond, The Pioneer Woman. I also like Ina Garten, The Barefoot Contessa, because sure. Reed has got the more comfort country type recipes. Ina is more what I was used to in New York, the more upscale, but you know, mm -hmm. I say upscale, but it doesn't mean it's going to be hard to make or impossible to find the ingredients. Um, I, I think a lot of people don't like to do the gourmet thing because it's intimidating at first, but um, that's part of why I wanted to start my blog is to show people you can do this. Mm -hmm. You can do this and you can have this and you don't have 
spend a ton of money and and you can just have this enjoyable food. I mean, food is the only thing where we employ all five senses. We can hear it sizzling, we can smell it, we can see it. It's it's pretty. It's it tastes good and it's just it feels good. The texture, like my crunchy fried rice, the texture is what really makes that. It's so it's the only thing I know of that all five senses are engaged at once. So I just want people to be able to experience that without having to worry about, oh my gosh, I can't afford this. Or, you know, I, I can't go out to eat right now. You know, whatever the case may be. Yeah, you, you know, I hadn't really thought of it in that way, but um, the way that food is engaging of all five senses that like, I feel like maybe we need that more than ever right now with the sort of the stresses and things that are going on around us day to day, to have something that fully engages our, intent, our attention um, and helps us to kind of disengage from all that and just relax and enjoy what we have in front of us. Um, that's so wonderful. It's such a wonderful gift that, that you can yeah, give to people. Know. To do that. You know, yeah. and to have a, a certain, you. <laughs> a certain mindfulness when you're eating, um, don't eat in front of the TV, sit down with your family or your friends. Yeah. Don't, <laughs> don't be on your phone. Have a, actually look somebody else in the eye. Um, have a conversation, but be very mindful of every bite that you're trying because it's an experience and a lot of labor and love goes into it. Just enjoy it. Otherwise, that meal is gone. The calories have been consumed, but you've got nothing out of it. You know, so mm -hmm. you have to you just enjoy yourself. And eating is one of life's great pleasures, you know, as is scent with like perfume and flowers and you know, with sound, you can hear birds or, you know, not to sound sappy, but like a babbling brook. I mean, these are things that um, are very enjoyable to us, lower our stress level, just make it feel like everything is good and worthwhile. So, and I put food right there because I, I, I love it. <laughs> I love it so much. But um, <laughs> I want you to tell me and to tell Todd in our audience how did you develop Awesome Sauce? Awesome Sauce started, um, it was a couple of years ago. My husband decided to do the keto diet because he needed to lose some weight. And his cholesterol was high and my blood sugar was high and um, diabetes runs in my family. So I didn't want to deal with that. So Awesome Sauce was intended to be a sugar-free barbecue sauce. And that was one where it took several trials and errors to get it where I, you know, it actually worked. Um, and it turned out where you can use it as a barbecue sauce, but you can use it in so many other ways. And I just kind of tweaked it as I went to get the, you know, because barbecue sauce has a little bit of smoky, a little bit of sweet, a little bit of spice. And this was my sugar-free version of that. So that's kind of where that came from. We're, I mean, we're no longer doing the keto diet. We maintain our weight now with intermittent fasting. And I've been able to control my blood sugar that way and still have the stuff I love, like pasta and bread and potatoes. Um, yeah. But that's where it started. That's where the idea came from. Yeah. Okay. Let me just ask you this, because I do intend to make it. I haven't looked at the recipe yet, unfortunately. What do you use for your sweetener? <laughs> what do you use as your sweetening substitute? I I use 100% um, whole leaf stevia, and you can't get that in the grocery store. Unfortunately, the stuff in the grocery store is usually mixed with uh, dextrose, um, more dextrose than stevia. So I order mine online, and I actually have a link on that web page of where I get the stevia. And a one-pound okay. bag, it's, it's uh, I think it's around $20, but... I've had it for a year and a half. You only need a teeny tiny bit because stevia, I think, is like 200 times sweeter than sugar. So you don't need much. And it works, though. I mean, when you mix it with all the other ingredients, you won't really get that funny aftertaste that you get with a right. lot of, like, sweet mo or whatever they sell in the store. So, yeah, I mean, the link is oh, in yeah. my website. So, um, but that's what I use. And it's actually green in color. You can get it white if it's uh, the extract. But the stuff mm -hmm. I use for this recipe is green because the color... It's, it's a red sauce. You won't have to worry about, you know, it looking funny or anything like that. <laughs> I could see you doing like an Alfredo sauce where it's supposed to stay white. It's this sickly. Well, you wouldn't put stevia in that anyway. <laughs> Frosting. Well, no, you, you need confectioner sugar. 
Yeah. Turn me <laughs> off. I don't know what I'm talking about. Stevie is interesting. I we we've never cooked with that. We've um we we have tried sort of no you know no sugar uh, alternatives, and so I, I think Noelle when she's cooked is is done with like maple syrup uh, as a substitute, um, or uh, I guess the the healthy alternative has been um, like coconut sugar. Um, sort of like, which is almost like a brown sugar and works really nicely in baking. But uh, I've heard good things about stevia as well. Yeah, stevia is a plant and it, it's a leaf and it has a lot of health benefits. For being a sweetener, it's actually good for you. Which we all what kind of benefits does it have? <laughs> it has, oh my goodness, it's kind of like sesame oil or frankincense essential oil. It has all kinds of benefits for cholesterol and heart. It's good for your heart. Um, there's zero calories, like none at all. Um, yeah, it, it's just an all around, it's an herb. So um, you can use it to sweeten tea or coffee. Okay. Um, and that's what I've been using every morning to sweeten my coffee. I have the extract, which is also 100% stevia, but it's a, a powder and they extract the flavor. So you don't get that green color. It doesn't, you know, have the leaf in it. So mm -hmm. I use that in my coffee in the morning and my blood sugar is back to normal. <laughs> Todd, do you feel a little inspired to try well, something? Well, you know, I am. I, I think the awesome sauce sounds interesting, although I was kind of intrigued by the crunchy uh, fried rice. That's, that kind of got my, piqued my interest a little bit there. I, uh, and and I, I saw a couple of your videos. I really like your manner and your approach to, to, to teaching, you know, how, how, to, how to make the food. So question that I had is um, how long have you been doing your podcast or not your podcast, but your blog and who films you when you do the videos <laughs> and what do you do to get over your nervousness? If you are nervous at all when you're doing it. Well, um, my blog started, it actually started as a healthy eating blog, and it was more geared towards cooking with essential oils, which I do, and there are some recipes, there's a segment on my blog that still is devoted to that, but I like to eat everything, and I just decided, you know, why limit myself? So um, my food blog now encompasses pretty much everything, but with a little bit of a gourmet twist. And because I, I can't leave anything alone. I have to take a normal recipe and just, you know, pump it up a little bit. Right. And yeah, as far as filming, um, <laughs> I'm a one man show. I, I have my my uh, MacBook Air. I have my phone. I actually have a contraption I made that I hang off of the vent hood on my stove. And I, you know, I have plexiglass in there and I slip my phone in there to get the overhead shots. And I have my Mac set up and I have lights and my little microphone and mm -hmm. um, I just turn everything on and I start cooking and talking and I actually write a script sh a script out ahead of time so I don't miss anything, so I don't get nervous. Um, I, it's, I don't know that I get nervous as much as I get, I, you know, overwhelmed because <laughs> there's a lot, right. you know, and, and if you look on my uh, YouTube channel, a lot of the... Uh, Older videos kind of stink, <laughs> you know, so um, it, uh, it, I just love doing it. I just, I've always been into website and web design. I did a little bit of that in New York as well. Um, so this technology stuff, I just like doing it. So I kind of, it just works. You know, I can do the filming and the, the editing and the putting the music on it. And it, I do, I do everything. It's, it's a long drawn out process, but I enjoy it. If I didn't enjoy it, it the blog wouldn't last. Right. Hey, hey, Darla, she hasn't seen our early videos. <laughs> Christy, go back and watch. Yeah. Well, it, it, then they weren't that bad. Well, a lot of traffic good. noise. And... We're, we're no, we're, we're not <laughs> that much better than we were. <laughs> yeah, we're not that great now. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's only been You're two fine. years and we still suck. No. <laughs> Well, I do. Well, I, I always have. <laughs> I wanted to know too, Christy, who is who is the biggest inspiration in your culinary life? I mean, 
Was it Julia? Was it, I mean, who really inspired you the most? Um, well, you know, I, as a little kid, I know this sounds really funny, but as a little kid on cold Sunday afternoons, this is before the internet and all that stuff. Um, I actually would cut the pictures out of the magazines that had food in them and I'd make collages out of this. Um, that's what I did. I know it, other girls did Barbie dolls and stuff, but I was cutting pictures of food out and, and, you know, and then I, when I was living in New York for a while, uh, there was a sh show on called uh, Two Hot Tamales and an Essence of Emerald. And that's when I really started getting into this. Um, now my inspiration is Reed Drummond, the pioneer woman, um, Ina Garten, and uh, Rachel Ray was one of my inspirations. There's just a lot of the chefs I worked with out in New York. I mean, they, they don't have TV shows and they don't have big names or anything like that, but just they were so passionate. Oh, my gosh. They were so passionate about food. They just this chef Dennis, I worked with him in New York in Westchester County and he made this steak one time and he was just singing and he was happy and he was this beautiful piece of meat. And it just, it's, I, that's, I love it. You know, it's, that's how I am about food. I'm always singing when I'm cooking and yeah. So the, the those who are just passionate about it is, you know, how I get my inspiration. I think that's great. I liked, um, uh, Rick Bayless and because I love Mexican food yeah, and uh, well yeah, Julia Child for sure and I, I was a huge fan of uh, Alton Brown Goody. yes <laughs> love that guy yeah yeah that's a good one I love how they they really <laughs> covered the science of cooking yeah why things yeah. work and why they don't and it was that's neat. Totally nerdy Monty Python fun, but like his recipes are really good, so it was always a good time. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> so, uh, Christy, before we uh, before we wrap up here, um, do you have any uh, favorite sources for ingredients or foods around the area? Places that you like to to source uh, some of your some of your cooking supplies from? Yes. Um... I usually, my grocery shopping takes almost a whole day because I go to several different places, but I usually start out at Steve's Meats on 147 and they have mm -hmm. some really good meat there. Um, and then I go to Wilfrid Farms when they're in, you know, during the season when you, when they have produce and I get a lot of produce there. Uh, one of my favorites is the uh, Lakeside Country Store on 42. It's um, not far from where I live, actually. It's about a mile up the road. And they have all these really interesting ingredients like chickpea flour and stuff that you can't find at the regular grocery store a lot of the time. Um, awesome. They have so much stuff. And I always go there and I buy a bunch of stuff there. And then my last stop is usually like Pick and Save or Festival. But um, yeah, that's usually a grocery shopping day is a multi-part experience for me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, especially, I think, especially when we live, you know, in an area with so many different kinds of, uh, you know, farmers and and food choices around here, it's it's uh, it's it's nice to be able to source your food locally and not have to have recourse to a big chain grocery store, you know, for that. Okay. And, and Christy, uh, b before we go, uh, want to give the uh, the URL for your for your blog again, or how people can connect with you online? Yep, it's thegourmetcountrygirl.com. Very good. Christy, hope to have you back again. Maybe we, you know, once we're past all this COVID stuff, we can actually do a little cooking in the kitchen together. Would love to do a cooking episode. It'd be a lot of fun. And, that would, uh, that would fun. be fun. That would be awesome. <laughs> yeah, it would be a lot of fun. Awesome sauce. <laughs> I, I, I'll, I'll get to show off my amazing knife skills, chopping vegetables or whatever. So <laughs> that's when Christy and I are going to leave the kitchen. <laughs> Where's the love? Come on, man. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> I meant to do that. I've only ever lost, you know, a couple of fingers. <laughs> <laughs> they were nice while they lasted, I was going to say. Uh, Chris, Christy, thanks again for joining us. We had a blast. And um, hopefully you'll come back on the show again and you weren't too scared off by us. <laughs> Oh, this is good stuff. Yeah.
yeah, this is awesome. Thanks for having me. Thank you, everybody, for joining us. And uh, we'll be right back. We're going to begin with two cups of cooked jasmine rice. Now when you cook your jasmine rice, you can cook it ahead of time to save time on the night you're making your fried rice. Just keep it in the refrigerator for up to a week. When you cook the rice, don't rinse it if there's any extra water. You want to keep the starch in the rice. That's what's going to make it crunchy and sticky later on. It should look something like this. <laughs> yeah, it should be really sticky like that. Let's get started. Get a medium skillet, nice and hot over medium high heat. Once the skillet is hot, you should be able to feel the heat coming off of it. You're going to add two tablespoons of pure sesame oil. I like to use pure sesame oil because it's just so much nicer in flavor and it tends to just cook a little bit better and it's super good for you. Mm, listen to that sizzling. Swirl it around in the pan a little bit just to make sure it covers the entire bottom of the pan. And then you're going to take your two cups of jasmine rice and just drop it right in there, just like that. And mash it down into a layer that covers the bottom of the pan about, should be about a quarter of an inch thick if you're using a, a 12 inch skillet. Really mash it down. You're going to smell that sesame oil. Once your rice is completely covering the bottom of the pan, you're gonna let it sit and cook over medium high for five minutes. Don't stir it. I know it's tempting, but you don't wanna to touch it during that five minutes. It's what's gonna make it nice and crispy. It's what's gonna take those starches and turn them into this nice brown crunchiness. So just let it rest. Now we're gonna cut up some scallions. One of the things I just love about this recipe is you can prepare the other ingredients by cutting the scallions while the rice is cooking. That's the beauty of having a recipe where you don't have to stir while it's frying. So I'm going to cut about a bunch of scallions, depending on how large they are, anywhere between 8 and 12 scallions. If you want them to be really pretty, just cut them on an angle. I'm going to use the white and the light green parts only. The dark green parts, just save them for something else later. Just like that. Mm. I'm all about saving time. So while the rice is cooking, you can measure out the rest of your ingredients. Half a teaspoon of crushed red pepper flakes. This will give it just a little hint of heat. And then two tablespoons of soy sauce for that true Asian Chinese food flavor. Mm, I love soy sauce. Soy sauce is a bit salty, so when you add your salt in later, and we're gonna do that closer to the end, you're not gonna to wanna to add too much, just enough to get the right flavoring. And then two teaspoons of fish sauce. Now fish sauce, it smells a little mm, funky by itself, but don't worry, it's not gonna make the dish taste bad. Fish sauce adds a little bit of umami, which is kind of a, not really salty, but it's more of a brothy flavor. It just gives the rice a little bit of depth, a little bit of richness. So you're not going to want to leave that out. Now we're going to head on over and add these to our fried rice. After about five minutes, the rice is going to start to brown. Now when you flip it over, if you notice, some of the spots are getting a little bit too dark. Just turn the heat down to medium, just over medium. Don't be afraid to add a little more sesame oil as you go to keep things from burning and to add even more goodness. You can never have too much sesame oil. And let it go for another five minutes without touching. After the second five minutes, you're going to see your rice is starting to get kind of gooey looking, kind of sticky. 
especially if you added more of that sesame oil, and I would highly recommend adding another couple of tablespoons in the second five minutes. And just as it's getting ready to be flipped again, you're gonna sprinkle your scallions over the top. Along with your red pepper flakes, the fish sauce, <laughs> and soy. Press it all down. And then flip it over into large chunks. You should see it starting to really stick together. The rice is gonna really start to brown up at this point. And don't be afraid, the soy sauce will help that along. It's not burning. You'll know it's burning because you'll smell it. As long as you don't smell burning, you're good. You want it to be nice and brown and toasty, just like that. Let it go for another three minutes, and then we'll flip again. Now is when you want to mix everything up to make sure those flavors are evenly distributed throughout the rice. So just give it a good stir, and you'll see it's really starting to brown up now, get nice and crunchy. Oh, if only you could smell this right now. It's delicious. I can't wait to have a bowl. Fried rice makes a great lunch. It's so healthy with that sesame oil. You don't really need anything else with it. Mm. Season with a little salt and pepper. And now remember, because of the soy, you're not gonna need that much salt. Just enough to give it a little mm. A little bit of pepper. And now we're ready to serve. This is the part we've all been waiting for. Now for a fried rice that has no egg in it, this stuff is delicious. It doesn't have any meat, and the only vegetable are the, the scallions. But you know, there's so much flavor, you don't need any of that other stuff. If you wanna add it, go ahead. <laughs> I'm not against adding more stuff. But this is just such a simple, easy to make fried rice dish, and it's super crunchy. Oh. Yeah, the texture is just what makes it. Mm, let's give it a try. Oh my goodness. Oh, it's so crunchy. That texture just sends this rice over the top. It's got a little bit of heat, but not too much. Oh. Can you hear the crunch? You can have this by itself. We can have it alongside your favorite Chinese dish. Mm. Well, that's it. It's as easy as one, two, three. Mm. having a good Chinese fried. You can find it at your local supermarket. It's usually in the area with the Oriental and the Asian spices and the cooking. Now this fried rice has no egg in it, no vegetables other than the, the green onion. The wait, wait. Uh, 